Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, this is GLR Esports with some video from iRacing. Now this is the first time that I've uh, broadcast here on GLR with some iRacing stuff and we are racing currently in the 1934 Fords. Little Ford Coupes, they're fiberglass bodies because they don't want to wreck classic cars. But these things are fun. They're Obviously, rear wheel drive, four gears, I believe a small block V8 in the front, and these things are really fun. They're a bit of a handful, and we are racing around USA International Speedway, which is a three quarter mile or just a hair over a kilometer oval track in Florida. Now, it's got some relatively banked turns, they're, I believe, probably about between 12 and 14 degrees, give or take. Four corners, but in reality it's two corners, but we treat it like four. And right now we're just doing the parade lap here. I qualified in third place. Uh, number nine, which is the car in front of me, qualified on pole, and number 10 is to his outside. If you don't know, in uh, stock car oval racing, typically it's the inside line that are the odd placed, uh, the outside line or the even placed, although they have instituted a, a uh, a choose rule where you could choose the outside or the inside, but uh, it's not present in at least this this racing series. Now this is a ranked match. Now I'm currently ranked a rookie, and I'm racing of course in the Mom's Chicken Farm, JD's Chicken Feed and Tackle Ford Coupe. Uh, we feed into this so they taste the best. Uh, there's our sponsor pitch, not an actual sponsor, don't worry YouTube. And we are now coming to green. Now the green flag, basically you can start it as soon as the pace car goes in, that's kind of what the number nine does. He guns it. I gun it behind him, and I actually get a fairly decent start here. Um, as does the number nine XE. He just rocks to the lead. I slot into third place, and the number 10 goes into the inside. Now, the strategy with oval racing is a little bit different than, say, on road courses. Where corner technique, these corners are so long, it's about more of consistency and preservation of speed rather than. Uh, the corner technique you typically see on road courses. So you're only lightly braking, actually even in these cars, I think you're just getting off the gas and trying to get on the gas as early as you can, maximize the amount of usage of the, uh, of the track, and don't hit the wall. That is really important. Um, that is a lesson that, well, I'm going to benefit from and that the number nine is going to learn a very hard lesson as he bumps into the wall there, spins in front of the 10, nails the 10, and oh my god, chaos ensues behind. But me and the lucky number 13 moves on into first. But let's take a look at that wreck real quick. And we're going to look first from the nose cam of the number 10 car. You see just a bump there, loses the car, and just gets pommeled. Just a center punch to the door. Uh, but now let's look from his tail view and we can watch the chaos that happened behind him. There's my lovely number 13 car. Usually I'm number 28. It just randomly assigns numbers to me. So we're now coming out of turn four. There's the bump. There's his bump there. He slams on the brakes and then, oh, there goes the number six. Ah, oh, and then there's a, oh, jeez, there's just chaos behind. So let's take a look at that because, uh, what a wreck here. So there's his bump in the wall slides and 10 has a little bit of damage but we should now take a look at the number six cards that's where all the calamity ensues boom just it starts rolling and slamming against the wall there's a Reese's Pieces car there that's on the uh, on the inside grass and oh that is a hard hit now it's mainly because he just bounces off the fender there that kicks him up in the air kills the cameraman as do some of the other cars. There's the number nine. You just saw him flash into screen. And, oh, hard wreck. Let's watch the, uh, the Reese's Pieces car here. That's where he gets nailed. He just nails the number nine, just center punches him, and he just immediately disconnects. Now let's watch from further back in the field. I forgot exactly who this was, but he had reasonably quick hands. Just as chaos happens, he just tries to avoid, just doesn't quite get it. Gets a little bit of a nick on number six but I don't think it actually quite synced because this car seems to be relatively okay. Now let's come back here to my lead. And now I'm just running for my life. Now I know the two car, well at least the one 
the number 10 car behind me is faster. Uh, he was able to get about a tenth of a second faster than I was at qualifying. I believe I did a... I think I was down into the 24s. I just don't remember exactly what the qualifying time was. Uh, for, for rookie classes, getting in the 24s and 25s is pretty good around here. Um, and I think I had like a probably mid to high 24 and he just had a tenth of a second faster and the number nine car had about like two or three tenths faster he was definitely the favorite to win on that one um, but we're gonna fast forward here and this is lap I believe it's 15 now I'm gonna show you what it looks like to defend on an oval because it's not quite the same uh, you still try and take an inside line when you're trying to be defensive but that can compromise your exit out of the turns because you're not utilizing the full extent of the track so as you see, the number 10 is looking here. He's got a good run, he's got my draft, and he comes to my inside. So he's gonna try and make this pass happen. Now I don't quite defend here, but rather than taking the inside line, there are ways to defend from the outside. So I'm giving him space, I'm just trying to steal him out a little bit. And I see, okay, he's racing fair. So now I'm gonna give him the squeeze. So that means I'm gonna come down as close as I can to him and try and impede his runoff the outside to keep him from getting a run. And you see, I'm able to use more of the track and get a better run out on the straights. Basically, I do the same thing into this turn. And he keeps it narrow there out of two, and I'm able to take, take first place back. And that right there was the pass and the defense for the lead. And the thing is, we do not really push it. Now, I do try and get him to battle with the number three car behind, and that's exactly what happens. But at this point, that right there is the face of victory. Just an open track ahead of me, and a fairly calm as a cucumber racer there. And the 10 car, I'm looking at my rear view mirror and watching the 10 and the three pretty much battle it out uh, for the next following laps. Now, fast forward on to lap 21, and Here's a bit of sportsmanship as well as just some close racing. The number three and the number 10 car start battling again. And this is the battle for, for second place here. So it gets pretty heated. But as they come in turn three and we start up to lap uh, 22, number three car edges ahead. Number 10 is saying, no, 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 I ain't having it. And he tries to just pull, drive it into the corner that really puts the pressure on. So as they come here around number uh, turn number two, the number 10 car gets a pretty decent run. I noticed that he was breaking a lot later uh, than some of the other cars. And so he just ends up driving it in a little too hard, bumps him, spins him out, and out. Pure sportsmanship right there. Lets him have the spot back and falls back in line. Goes back, I believe, to about fifth place or sixth place here. Just heartbreak there because he, he was about to have a good race. But now that's racing. But good sportsmanship on him. Now we come here. This is the uh, second to last lap. And you see, I built myself up quite a lead because of that issue that the number 10 and the number 3 had. And it caused the then fourth place car to move up in the second. I've got now about a three second lead. And I'm just cruising away for victory. Come out of turn four, take the white flag. And just all this is is about not making any mistakes. So I hold my line in there, accelerate out. Now tire wear is a factor in this race. You do start having to actually trail break a little bit into those corners to keep yourself down on the apron. And that, you know, some people have a little bit of trouble with that, but if you try and take it just as lifting, you're going to really compromise it. There I go. I take the checkered flag. And this was my first victory on an oval. And this is what actually moved me up into the D class um, and out of rookie on the ovals, which is pretty cool, which means I get to uh, race in a new series. So in the next video, you'll see me race in the Arkham Menards. Uh, they have the 2009 era, which is based off of the Gen 4 Cup cars. And we'll be racing at Pocono on that next one. So for that, uh, we want to tell you to like and subscribe, comment, share, all the YouTube things, and you see me really struggle to try and get donuts going, so uh, give a like for uh, struggle donuts, but oh, there he goes, there he goes, he figures it out.
do it right across the start finish line. I'll get better at donuts, I promise. And look at that guy just waving that flag. He is really hacking it. But that was my first victory. Thank you for joining us and uh, look forward to seeing you guys in the future.